What do you do when you're stuck in the house and you're so darn bored? You watch anything at all? It's Fireside Chat with Pastor Eric. Hi, and welcome to the May 29th edition of Fireside Chat with Pastor Eric. Well, I'm sure many of you have been keeping your eye on the news over the last couple of months and watching as things to de develop. And you have probably noticed the reports that just recently, the state of California and the county of Los Angeles both released new guidelines for the possibility of allowing churches to gather physically again together for worship. With some provisions, mind you. But I'll get to that in a moment. I will get right now instead to the question that is probably on all of your minds right now, which is, when will we gather for worship at Rock physically together again? Well, I want you to know that we talked about it uh, at some length in our council meeting last Tuesday night, online, of course. And as we talked about it, we remembered that our focus through this whole thing has always been on health, on your health, on my health, on the health of the people around us, the community and communities in which we live. And we talked about the fact that we are citizens of the kingdom of God. And as citizens of the kingdom of God, we are sometimes called to self-limit or to sacrifice ourselves for the sake of other people. And particularly in this case, the health of other people. Jesus, of course, is our model who sacrificed enormously for your sake and for mine. And so we see him and we understand that we are sometimes called to self-limit for the sake of others. And in fact, some of the churches in the ELCA locally began to limit their own worship services even before the orders came from the state. And I'm sure as you've gone along, you have heard stories as well of churches that have met prematurely perhaps and have become flashpoints for the virus to spread and where people came together for worship and then went home carrying the virus to other people. In fact, I even uh, saw an article posted on Facebook by a former student of mine about a church in Germany where they, they met for worship on May 10th. The, the country had relaxed their rules around those things and they did everything that they were supposed to do to to prevent the spread of the virus with face coverings and social distancing and all of that. And still, 40 people became infected with the coronavirus through that worship service. And I know that you feel as the council does and that as I do, that the last thing we would want is for someone to come to a worship service at Rock of the Foothills and become infected with this virus and become seriously ill. So with all of that in mind, the council decided to continue our online worship for the time being and hold off gathering face to face for the time being. And honestly, I need to tell you that even if we did decide to begin preparations to meet on campus for worship, it wouldn't be this Sunday because as I said, there are provisions and regulations around how we could gather. And the list is literally longer than my arm. Yeah, so it, it wouldn't happen right away. Uh, but we will continue with our online worship services and we don't have a target date set. We didn't wanna really, really set one because you know how things can change quickly. However, we will be monitoring, continuing to monitor the situation and the council has put together a task force to go over these guidelines and look at how we can start to gather again when it seems healthiest to do so. We will meet again face to face, but until then, we will make our sacrifice for the sake of the health of the people around us, especially those who are most vulnerable. And you know, Lisa and I were talking about this recently, and we began to look at the history of the church and what, how God has been with his people 
throughout the history of the church. While the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness in Exodus, God gave them specific instructions for building the tabernacle. And the tabernacle was the dwelling place, the place where God dwelt with God's people. And the interesting thing about it is it was a tent that could be easily assembled and it could also be easily disassembled and moved so that as the Israelite people moved through the wilderness and into the promised land, God moved with them. And God lived in the tabernacle and eventually there came the time when David became king and David wanted to build a temple for God, a house for God. And God's response was kind of like, who told you I didn't want to live in a tent? What's wrong with living in the tent? And God said no to David building a temple. Instead, Solomon would build the temple. And so the temple did become built. The Ark of the Covenant was put in the Holy of Holies, and it was understood as God's throne, the place where God dwelt with God's people. Well, Sunday, this coming Sunday, is Pentecost Sunday. And before that event at Pentecost, God, or Jesus, came to this earth, walked this earth, he was crucified, he rose again, and he promised his followers that the Holy Spirit would come upon them in a powerful way and that God would dwell with them. And this Sunday we're going to hear that story when the Holy Spirit comes upon the believers in a powerful way so that the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant, is no longer the, the place where God dwells with God's people but God's people themselves are the place where God's Spirit dwells. We will hear that story. The Spirit rests on the people of God. And the promise then in Scripture is that the Spirit rests on the people of God. The Spirit rests on you. The Spirit rests on me. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God is with you. And you know I've said that all along. God is with you. We love our church building. We love to gather physically, but we don't need our church building to be with God because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. So I mean it. I've said it all along, and I mean it when I call us to watch for the Spirit's activity even now even in our cloistering. We watch not only for what God will bring out of this bad situation, but we also look for what God is doing right now, what the Holy Spirit is doing right now in you and in me, in our scattered situation. Because the truth is, throughout history, throughout the history of the church, the church has often been most effective when it has been moved to the margins, when it has been scattered out into the world. Well, for the last couple of weeks, I have also been answering some questions from some of the young people in our congregation. I'd like to move on to a couple of these questions right now. The first question is from Levi, who asks me, why don't I get all the toys that I want? Well, I, uh, I, I don't really know why you don't get all the toys that you want, um, but I can say that probably none of us ever have. And I can also say that it, it's really, the truth is, when we get everything we want, it often turns out kind of bad for us. It makes us weaker people. That may not be the answer you want from your pastor, sorry, but it's really kind of true. When we tend to get everything we want, we tend to be kind of self-absorbed people. So it's kind of better when we don't get everything we want. And I, I can be sure of this as well, and that is that your parents are making the best decisions for you. The second question is from Luke, who asks me, why do some people not believe in God? 
You know, that is a really good question, Luke. And um, I think the reasons that people have for not be believing in God, there are many, many different reasons that people can have. And for every person who doesn't believe in God, it's probably a very personal reason. Some people don't believe in God because they had a painful experience in a church, in a Christian church. Some people don't believe in God because they, as they think about it, that doesn't make a lot of logical sense to them. And they haven't really been exposed to the real logical arguments that there are for the existence of God. And some people haven't even heard the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's a sad thing. And an even a sadder thing is that some people have, but it was told to them, Jesus was shared to them in a mean way. And it's, it's a sad thing, but it's, it is weird to sound. It's a weird, that sounds weird, right? But it, it is actually true that sometimes people share Jesus in a mean way, and then people don't want to know. But I'll tell you this, I am grateful that I believe in God and that I know Jesus. And I'm grateful that you believe in God, Luke, and that you know Jesus. And I constantly pray for the opportunity to tell other people about him and do so in a way, as, as the Bible tells us, to do so with gentleness and with respect. And our last question for today comes from Arlie, who asks me, what is your favorite animal? What is my favorite animal? Oh, Arlie, there are so many amazing animals in the world. This is such an amazing world that we live in. As I've been doing my prayer times outside first thing in the mornings, just this last spring, I've seen so many birds out there, I can't even tell you. So. I, there are so many beautiful animals, I don't want to even try to think of which animal is my favorite. But I will say this, I know you and I, we both like cats a lot. Well, that is Fireside Chat with Pastor Eric for this week. It's been good to spend a little time with you. Be well be healthy. The peace of God be with you always.